Sam, I'm the Minister at Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. Welcome to Teaching Stream. Teaching Stream is our online teaching ministry and is used primarily to provide the curriculum for our small groups. But whoever you are, for whatever reason you're watching this, I hope that it blesses you. My dad's been taking a break from his Ephesians series and he'd asked me uh, whether I could uh, perhaps do a small aside series uh, about Jews and Gentiles in the early church. I realised very quickly uh, that I did not have the expertise and I've not done the reading and I don't have the time to do it to put that together. Although it's something that I would quite like to have a little look into in the future. So you might get, um, you might get a teaching stream series from me on that subject. So instead of that, what I'm going to look at today is the parable of the talents, which you'll find in Matthew's Gospel. We're not doing Luke's Gospel. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, from verse 14 all the way through to verse 30. So if you want to find your Bibles and shuffle through that, uh, that's what we're going to be reading in a moment. But before I invite you to pause this video and read, let's pray together. Loving Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you speak through your word. I pray that I would be obedient to you as I share from your word and I pray that each of us would be obedient to your words to us. I pray we would hear your voice over and above all the other voices. I pray we would hear your voice certainly over and above my voice. Uh, and, and Holy Spirit, I pray that this time would just be a time of rich blessing uh, where we would hear from God. I ask that in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Right, you know the drill. Pause the video and uh, read the verses that pop up on your screen, courtesy of Steve, our technical wizard. <laughs> So this parable, often called the parable of the talents, because uh, in the uh, original language, that's the weight of the gold that each of the servants are given. In my NIV, it now just says bag of gold. Um, uh, and I'm going to go into talents a bit. Uh, the parable of the talents, quite a famous one. Uh, master gives his servants each a portion of gold before he goes away. He then comes back and returns. One of the servants brings it back and has doubled it. Uh, he's been given a big amount. Uh, the next servant comes back, but given a medium amount. It's almost like the, um, it's a little bit like the uh, three bears, isn't it? Uh, so the middle one who's been given a medium amount comes back and they've doubled it. Uh, the, the master is really pleased with his servants that have doubled it. And then the final servant was too scared to do anything with um, the gold that they'd received. So they bring it back to the master and it has not increased in value. Uh, they have not done anything with the gold that they have been given. This servant is then treated harshly and then is put outside of the master's care in a place where there is great crying and gnashing of teeth. Crying and gnashing of teeth makes sense because uh, this is one of the parables that tries to explain the end times that Jesus has been talking about in this chapter and the previous chapter, the fall of the temple, the destruction of Jerusalem uh, that would mark the end of days. And this he's trying to explain what it will be like and, and actually how people will be judged in terms of what God has given them and what they bring back to God uh, and how that final judgment will come about so this is a an image of the kingdom of God in its fullness and actually of God um, checking in on those servants to see how they they've done in this time of the not yet kingdom uh, with the gold or the gifts and talents that he has placed in their hands now to help us understand uh, this uh, a little bit more, I thought it'd be useful for us to know actually what is a talent. Well, a talent is a weight measurement. And I've told reliably that in New Testament uh, Israel, at New Testament Judea, that 58.9 kilograms would have made up a talent. Now that, I don't know about you, but that's a bigger amount than I was really considering uh, whenever I've heard this parable spoken about before or read it in my uh, children's books to my children or when my parents read it in my children's books to me. That's 58.9 kilograms. To put that in perspective, uh, the price for gold today, I'm recording this on Thursday, the price on gold today is, uh, per kilogram, is £51,024. So the price... The price you would get for 58.9 kilograms of gold today is 
£313.60p. So the amount of money that has been given to each of the servants, uh, very clearly across the ancient world, would have been considered to make them a rich person. When we're not talking about a small amount of money. The, the amount of money that each of them get, so one talent, if you had a talent of gold, you are incredibly rich within the economy of the Near East. And the amounts of money that we're talking about are not small. Uh, I, I think that's just a helpful thing for us to keep in our minds when we're thinking about this parable. Uh, one thing that I want to talk about before I sort of talk about how we're going to apply this to us today is this does offer quite a positive view of speculation, if that makes sense. It, it offers a pop, uh, a very positive view of investing money for a return. Uh, actually, if Jesus is using the image of investing money for a return as a positive in, um as a positive image of the kingdom of God that the father looks at and says, well done, faithful servant. Actually, that might tell us something about the ethics that we can have around money uh, and around making money. Sometimes within Christian circles, we think that actually making money is a net negative. That, that's not true. That's not the teaching at all. A love of money is always a negative, but actually to be able to increase money is not seen as a negative thing. And I think this parable is a really good pointer to the fact that actually to invest for a return is seen as a positive thing by God. And actually it is a way in which it is a metaphor that Jesus uses to explain how we should relate to God and the things that he places in our hands. So let's go to application. In this parable, the master is clearly God. We know this because throughout Jesus' parables, he uses the analogy of a king or a master, left, right and centre, and that character is always God, the owner of the vineyard, um, the, uh, the landlord. Th that character is, is always God, God the father. And when the master, the king, has servants or slaves, then we are to assume that that is relating to us, for we are the servants of God. And in the language of the New Testament, we are the slaves of God. We were once slaves to sin, now we are slaves to righteousness. Um, so we should see ourselves in the role of the servants. What does the master do? The master gives portions of money to each of his servants in accordance with their trustworthiness and their ability. He places in people's hands gold. It is clear that his expectation, by what he does when he returns, is that that gold should bring about a return. He does not give to the servants so that that, that gold can either reduce or stay the same. He gives to the servants so that it can increase. We, as followers of God, and those who have been created by him and recognise his lordship, are given gifts. We must recognise that all of our financial gifts, all of our skills and abilities, everything that is in our hands has been a gift from God. God is so gracious. He is so self-giving that he places things into us, his servants' hands. We should therefore recognise the gifts that he has given us as to having a purpose. That purpose is to increase the kingdom of God. To grow the kingdom of God. Therefore, if the gifts that God has placed in your hand are finances, those finances should be increased for the purposes of the kingdom of God. Invested into the work of the kingdom. If we behave in a trustworthy manner with that gift that God has given to us, it then says that God will give us more. I believe that what it's talking about here is not necessarily an immediate blessing within the natural and the present as we see it today, but actually that we will in the time to come be trusted with more of the recreation of the universe and everything. God has placed in our hands our gifts, our finances, our skills. And those gifts, finances and skills should be utilised for the growing of 
the kingdom. If you are talented as a speaker, then speak for Christ, winning others for Jesus. If you are gifted as an administrator, administer for the sake of the kingdom. Bring about structures and processes that will increase the likelihood of people meeting Jesus Christ. That will support those who are doing the work of evangelism. The parable of the talents does this important work which says all that you have, as in all that you bear that has been given in you and has been placed in your hands, is a responsibility to bring back a increase for the kingdom. You aren't given it so that it is simply for personal use to be hidden, to have treasure as your own, but it is rather given so that it can be used to bring a greater reward for the kingdom of God. In church life, around finances in particular, we have this um, great phrase that we must be good stewards. Good stewards. People usually say that we need to be good stewards of the resources that we have, when what they are really saying is we mustn't spend this money. That in my mind, is a complete perversion of the teaching that we find here in the parable of the talents. Which of the three servants is a good steward? Is it the one who does nothing with the money? Or is it the two who double the money that they receive? Well, it's clear when we read this parable what that means. The good stewards are the one who bring back a bigger return. Therefore, when we are thinking about money, what we should not simply be doing is thinking about how we can save it, but rather how we can use it to bring about an increase within the kingdom of God. This is an important way of viewing our financial gifts. And the best way for us to be able to think of that is to recognise this isn't our money it is a gift of grace from God that he has placed in our hands. And if he has placed, what is it, the one talent, three million, five thousand, three hundred and thirteen pounds, sixty in our hands, actually our responsibility for bringing back a great return for the kingdom of God through that money is greater than if he has placed one pound in our hands. However, the responsibility remains exactly the same. We are to bring about an increase for the kingdom of God through the things that God has placed in our hands. This isn't primarily about money. It is also about our gifts, our skills and our talents. Do not dig a pit and bury them in the ground because you need to keep them safe. Rather, share them, use them so that it might bring about an increase for the kingdom of God. And there is a harsh word at the end for those of us who do not do this. Because actually, when God sees the gift that he has given to us that has not promoted an increase in the kingdom of God, he looks at the gift and he looks at the servant and he effectively says, I don't understand what you have done. I don't, I don't recognise you as part of my household. And he sends the servant out where there is crying and gnashing of teeth. Now, of course, we have an understanding of grace that says that actually, if we're washed in, in the blood of Christ, that isn't the case. But we... We have to hear the warning that actually if you have these gifts, skills and talents in your hands that you are not utilising for the sake of the kingdom of God and that are not bringing an increase for the sake of the kingdom of God, then in fact you are not doing the work that the master has called you to. It's a difficult teaching but it's also a really exciting one because what it says is God is a God who wants to include us in the great work that he is doing. The great work that he is doing is to transform the world into the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And one day he will return to bring it in its fullness and require some judgment. And he will want to look at the work that we did with the gifts that he has given us so that he can say, just like he says to these servants, well done, good and faithful servant. Therefore, I implore you today to look at the things that God has placed in your hands and ask how can I work for the increase of the kingdom of God with these things so that at the end of my race, God will look at me square in the eyes and say, well done, 
good and faithful servant. You come into my household. That's quite a quick teaching stream this week, um, but I, I think it's a really powerful parable and I, I'd love actually, I'm looking forward to a time when we're going to be going through Matthew uh, in our church services and we'll get to come up to that with the run up of the context before it. But I think it would be, I think it's helpful for us today uh, and this is what God laid on my heart for this kind of one-off teaching stream, the parable of the talents, the parable of the bags of gold. What have you got in your hand? And how are you being called to use it to increase the kingdom? As you run your race, run in such a way that you know when you arrive on that day of judgment, God will look at you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant, because in your hand is the increase. Let's pray together. Loving Father God, thank you for the gifts, skills and, uh, and resources that you have placed in our hands. Help us not to see them as our own, but rather as the fuel by which your kingdom might be increased. Help us to be a people who work tirelessly for the increase of your kingdom through the gifts and resources that we have. Help us not to be a people who wish to cling on to them, but rather who wish to utilise them and use them for the increase of your kingdom. I ask that in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. You're back with my dad next week. Phew, I hear you all say, to continue through your series in Ephesians. Bye!